What's up, Internet? This is Rambling Josh, and you're watching another episode of Let's Play Pokemon Card. So, one of the things uh, you can find throughout this game are uh, each area has a PC that you can examine. And periodically, you will get uh, mail from Dr. Mason here. And he will send you booster packs that will give you cards that are going to help you well, win duels and stuff, because you need cards to do that. So, uh, that was a pretty decent uh, booster pack. We got a Scyther, which is a pretty handy card. So, this uh, world is separated out into a bunch of, well, obviously a bunch of different areas. Uh, they've, there are the eight main Pokemon clubs. There's Fire, Science, Psychic, Grass, Water, Fighting lightning and rock each one basically being the equivalent to this game's gym leaders uh, there you will find trainers who specialize in the uh, each particular type of Pokemon and each one has a gym leader I suppose or a club leader I guess which you have to defeat to earn their medal uh, the Pokemon Dome is where you go to kind of beat the game uh, the challenge hall is just where weird things happen, and you have the chance to buy uh, special cards. And I forget exactly what the name of the guy who lives here is, but uh, he's got a whole bunch of books here that uh, give you kind of hints to how to use specific cards. Uh, but we'll come back here later. Now. This is our rival for the game, Ronald. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he basically just does a whole lot of talking. He's basically exactly the same character as your rival from the first generation games. Probably all, well maybe not all of them, but... Because I guess in other generations your rivals sometimes, you know, like actually nice and stuff. Anyways, this is the Rock Club. This is basically what you can expect from any club. There's the little lackeys who sometimes you have to beat them, sometimes you don't. And then there's the actual leader, usually chilling in the back or something. And each club has an area on the side with people that you can talk to. Uh, sometimes uh, people, there will be actual trainers in here. You can duel this guy, for example. Sometimes there'll be people looking to uh, trade cards. I think there might be people just looking to give away cards. So sometimes it's good to check out the side area. Uh, there's one specific reason that you absolutely should check out the side area, though. I don't really need to go into the main area at this point. I am looking in each club because I am looking for something. Where is it? Nope. I do enjoy that they have, uh, what is essentially the hero from the Generation 1 games here. Looks a little bit different, but mostly the same as this guy. I guess the biggest difference is the... I don't know if that's supposed to be his hat or like a ponytail or what. Oh, there's only one club left. I didn't... Hmm. I must be missing something. So let's just talk to all the people. Uh, click a lot of energy cards, okay. I would think I have a lot of energy cards already, thanks to What's-His-Face, but... So... As you may have noticed from some of the, these people talking, there's a fellow named Ishihara, which is... who lives in the house in the Northwest. There's something that I'm missing here. Uh, there's supposed to be a fellow who will show up in uh, one of these clubs, but she offers to trade. I guess maybe you have to hear about him first. So let's talk to some people, let's see if we can 
learn about him. I suppose I probably should have figured this out beforehand, but truth be told, I usually don't start off. Wait, what? Yes. Okay. I just made a deal with that dude to come back after I beat their leader. So, I guess, uh, while I'm doing this, that's what I'm looking for. Imakuni. Okay, so hopefully now that means that he will appear. Specifically, Imakuni is, as she says, a very strange fellow who has a chance, or not a chance, but uh, is guaranteed to show up in one of the clubs. Uh, which club he shows up in is random, but he shows up in the side area. So, basically what we do is we... Was it this club that I... Okay, whatever. Uh, we look into each club looking for Imakuni. And there's a very good reason for that. Uh, but I will withhold on revealing that for now. There he is. So just kind of chilling in the corner there. And the music changes. And one of the main reasons that I choose to fight this guy is because, frankly, he's just not very good. Uh, at the start of this game, our deck, it's, it's pretty bad. So, dang, Tails, I go second. Uh, wait, what does Headache even do? I don't remember. So, uh, it's kind of hard to find... Play like trainer cards, okay. Uh, it's kind of hard to find a trainer that you can actually beat. Uh, there are some pretty bad trainers out there, but even at this point, with the badness of our own deck, it's kind of hard to... Like, it basically just ends up being down to luck, whether or not you can actually beat them. So, that can be pretty frustrating, but this guy, in truth, is pretty bad. Uh, a lot of times he will actually just not even... Hmm. Uh, he'll just not even do the things that he is capable of doing. Uh, he's rather strange, like I said. It's kind of hard to explain exactly why, though, without seeing it. But, like, he'll sp uh, go out of his way not to do attacks and stuff, or he'll put energy in weird places, and I don't know. In truth, like, usually he's very non-aggressive. He'll just kind of chill out and not do much. This time he's actually doing a little bit. Um, he obviously attacked us with his Psyduck there. Uh, the ability that he was using was called uh, Fury Swipes, and the way that ability works is you flip three coins, and for each heads, you do 10 damage, so you can do as much as 30 damage. So I also got a little bit unlucky at the start there, uh, suffering 30 damage on the first one. But it is what it is. Uh, there, there's a good chance that he's not going to get the chance to draw another uh, basic Pokemon. Which I guess isn't something that I've explained yet. Uh, basic Pokemon basically re it means... Oh, hold on. Put another water energy on seal. Use a potion. And I want to use Professor Oak. Uh, what Professor Oak does is it makes me discard my entire hand and draw seven cards. So I, I was getting all the useful stuff out of my hand to draw seven new cards. In the hopes of getting something useful. But I did not. Well, I guess I sort of did, but... Uh... Right, but basic Pokemon, that's what I was talking about. So the only kind of Pokemon that you can actually put on the bench are basic Pokemon. You can't just take, like, a Charizard and put it on your bench. You have to start from the bottom and work your way up. Uh, so you have to put a Star U, or in this case, because I have a Star Me in my hand, you have to put a Star U in your uh, deck so that you can put that on your bench and then evolve it uh, from your opponent's discard pile and put it into... Why would you do that? 
I guess there's some str of strange situations where that could be useful. Uh, so anyways, this guy is confusing me with his confused ray, which is kind of unfortunate, but what are you going to do? Actually, I do have a star you. I should have put a water energy on that. So, uh, confusion... It does... The way the confusion works is that uh, if you try to attack while you are confused, you flip a coin. And if you get a tails, then you do 20 damage to yourself. Draw, use a bill, which lets me draw two cards. I've got more energy. Considering, I guess, it, it makes sense considering my deck is mostly energy. So, confusion is pretty annoying. And honestly, this guy's getting pretty lucky with it. Uh, no, normally I would just try and attack through the confusion, but in truth it just doesn't make much sense in the case of this dugong. I thought I wasn't confused. Oh, confusion doesn't go away. Oh, that sucks. Uh, let's see, just meow. Eh, whatever. Send out Meowth. Uh, but anyways, as I was saying, it just doesn't make much sense to... I, I use Headbutt with Dugong just because... I, it would only do 10 damage, and the risking taking 10, uh, 20 damage just isn't worth it. This honestly is not going all that well, but it's not that big a deal. See, he just didn't attack that turn. It's like, why? It doesn't make sense. Uh, but the nice thing about uh, using this Meowth, despite the fact that I'm killing myself, basically, is that Meowth has a resistance to Psychic. Which might be why he's uh, Dustrazi isn't attacking me. You can see on, on the bottom there, it says Resistance, and beside it there's a little psychic symbol, it's the eye. And finally I get to attack. I just do 20 damage to something random, which happened to be the Drowsy. So that's handy. Nah, this gambler failed. So anyways, uh, what that means, the, the Resistance, is that any attack of that type Wait, didn't I? Oh, I didn't kill the drowsy. Okay. I did kill myself, though. Uh. Blah, well, I was saying words. I guess I'll send out Starmie. I don't want Starmie to get confused, though. So, Tails? It is not a Tails, of course. I don't even remember what I was saying now. Help! What was I saying? The cover just heals health, right? Yeah. Try Star Freeze. No, god. Frickin'. I'm getting so unlucky, I should be annihilating this guy, but this confusion is just tearing me apart. Oh my god. Actually, that might work. Uh, scoop up... Scoop up Starmie. And send out Abra. So what that did is it uh, just put the Starmie back into my deck. Uh, so I don't have to worry about it being, like, dead anymore. And it allowed me to switch to Abra, which may not have actually ended up being the best idea. But, it did get that drowsy out of the way, although there's just another one there. Oh, did Scoop Up just put it back in my hand? Or not? Well, whatever. Now, the weird thing about Psychic Pokémon is that they're actually weak to themselves. So, uh... I don't actually remember what Abra's attack is, but... 
It would normally only do 10 damage, but did 20, because psychic types are weak to psychic types. So, hopefully you can kind of see what I mean by saying that my deck sucks and I need to fight weak people, because this guy is... I mean, I guess he can be pretty decent, but... He's not that good, uh... He doesn't have a very good deck, he's not very good a duelist, and he's still kind of ripping me apart. Please, oh, this confusion is ripping me apart, he's not doing anything. He's almost won at this point. I thought I had him early on when I had the star you, but it's not working so well. Uh, let's go with Radita. Actually, this might be turning around for me. Radita is resistant to Psychic. I've got this Raticate. Let's see what kind of deal. That's handy. So, I'll play this. So Radita's not quite so squishy anymore. And if I do suffer some sort of status ailment, then I have a full heal in my hand, which will allow me to remove said ailment. The Psyduck wasn't quite as lucky as the last one. Uh, I'll use... Actually, I sh should have put that water energy on. Radicate, but oh well. Uh, Super Fang, if you didn't read the description earlier, uh, deals half of your opponent's uh, health rounded up. So in this case, it would have done uh, 30 damage, which is more than Eradicate's Bite does, because Bite only does 20. But, well, it might be bad, I don't know. It should be fine. I do have a bunch of guys ready to go in the backup now. I didn't put a water energy on Raticate that turn because it does, uh, Super Bite does, or Super Fang, whatever it's called, does half of their remaining HP. So because he's at 3, it would only do 20 damage. That was almost close to killing this Raticate, which actually would be really bad because. He only has one prize left. So I'm going to retreat, uh, which involves removing one energy and moving your... Well, removing... Each Pokemon has a retreat cost. Uh, there's one energy sign beside the retreat cost here, which means that Raticate uh, discards one energy to retreat. He spent energy on all of his junk. I need to retreat, uh, I guess I'll go with Seal, Seal has the most health. Have I played energy this turn? No. Let's give it to Seal. I have a Dugong in my deck, so it's a possibility that I will end up drawing that. I'm actually starting to run kinda low on cards, so that means that my chances of drawing a Dugong are actually pretty decent. But I just keep getting energy. I'm not gonna do anything. Oh, that's handy. Uh, so one of the things that this guy uses is the Imakuni card, which is probably the worst card in the game. Uh, basically, it has a chance. Ooh, there's a Dugon. Nice. And evolving removes your status elements. Uh, so Imakuni it uh, confuses your own Pokemon. And in the case of Psychic Types, because Psychic Types are weak to Psychic, when they receive 20 damage from their own attack, it's actually doubled. I don't think that's actually something that's supposed to happen in like the official rules, uh, but that's at least how it works in this game. Man, now I'm getting all my good cards. And this is why having a bad deck sucks, because even though I have good cards, the chances of me actually finding them are so small that it's just not likely to happen. And that's the difference between a good deck and a bad deck. It's 
what the chances are that you are actually going to get the cards that you need. So now that I have this dugong go, uh, up and running, I'm just annihilating everything. And I'm actually finally able to win. That was incredibly frustrating and actually really close. But it was worth it. Because for winning, we get a Coliseum, which is just a type of booster pack. Uh, we've got a Bill, that's a pretty good card. Get an Evolution, which is another type of booster pack. Uh, da -da -da. Super Potion, I think, is okay. Nah, it's not, not the greatest. A Squirtle, that might come in handy, although they're pretty common. Now, most trainers, when you defeat them, only give you two bo booster packs. Uh, and I believe they're usually the same kind. Energy Removal, uh, that's good. But defeating Imakuni gives you one booster pack of each kind. So not only is it more cards, but it's also more variety. And there's really nothing all that good in this deck, or that booster pack. So that is why we fight Imakuni, because... Despite what it might look like, he's one of the easier opponents. And... He gives us four booster packs for beating him, so we can grow our deck pretty quickly. Uh, let's see here. Another Squirtle. And we get an email from Dr. Mason, and that's about all I want to do for today. Uh, but the one thing that I do want to mention is that uh, battling Imakuni is something I'm going to be doing often, at least at the beginning of the game here, because as I explained, it's basically the, the best way to quickly build your deck. Uh, so... Uh, bleh. The way the thing about dueling Imakuni is that now that we've defeated him, he's not he doesn't exist anywhere anymore. So uh, what we have to do is we actually have to turn the power off and then load our save game. So let's save real quick. And then when we load the game back up, like you actually have to do a hard reset. Uh, Imakuni will respawn somewhere. So he'll be located randomly in one of the four clubs, or eight clubs rather. So I'm going to basically be doing that, um, like I'm not gonna like abuse it, but I'm going to do that at the start of every episode, basically, until I'm happy with my deck. Uh, I'm not gonna show it because obviously I don't want to show, like that basically was this entire episode. Uh, but be between now and the next episode, I'm going to face him once more, and then I will catch you back here for the next episode of Let's Play Pokemon Card. Catch you later.